Today we're going to be putting this CNC autonomous fan controller in the cube. Now this is made for CNC machines but a lot of people use these for their computers especially the older ones that don't have fan sensors and that's what we're going to do. Now this is a really interesting device I'll explain more about it here but the beauty of this thing is it supports different voltages. It supports 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt power supplies. And obviously we're going to use the Molex 12 volt power to power this. And also the other nice thing about this is this will actually even run two fans simultaneously, but we're only going to use the one fan that we have in it, the base fan. It's a 12 volt fan and I put that in there a while back. I only run it on 5 volts currently, so I don't get the full cooling effect by any means, but when you put it on a 12 volt it does get pretty noisy. But the nice thing about this is when this hits 89 degrees, that's when it activates the fan. You've got two LEDs on it here. The red LED means that the board is getting power, and the yellow LED when it activates, when it starts flashing, that means the fan is running, and that happens when it hits 89 degrees. So more about this in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to be putting this in the cube, and I've been thinking about where I would like to put it. There's actually plenty of room in here to mount it. Now, as you can see, uh, I got the heat sink off of this thing. This is where the normal hard drive would go, but we've been running with a three partition SS crucial drive in it. And this is the uh, plate, basically it's like on a sled. But we're going to mount this in there. But what we're gonna do is I've been thinking about this and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take the optical drive out and there's plenty of space between here and the optical drive and I really want to try to do this without drilling any holes uh, it already comes with standoffs and I think if we get creative enough if I use some washers I could actually put this in tighten the nut screws down without putting any holes because I really don't want to do that I even thought about doing velcro but I said well let's try doing this this way first so that's what we're going to do also what I have to do is I will take the airport bracket off because I have the fan plugged in currently to the Molex connector but what I'm going to do is I need to run power from the 12 volt Molex in the fan and it's going to go to the board which isn't very far it's all real close proximity and then also we have a temperature sensor this plugs into that and then we need to put this up here and so I'm going to figure out a spot where to mount this sensor now the manufacturer says that you should use a thermal epoxy that's what they recommend but I think we could probably mount it near the heat sink close to the CPU obviously the uh, this is the bottom of the cube rotate this over this is the heat sink and then there's the, uh, the the daughter board where the processor is and that's the main logic board there and you can see this plate here um, that's that's where the uh, die of the CPU goes against and of course you got the heat sink here the base fan blows up and it pretty much just everything in its path it's going to cool down and it does work quite well so I'm thinking probably I'll put that sensor probably up here somewhere uh, I'm just trying to think of a good way to mount it and I'll figure out something here shortly but my main thing is is to get that CNC fan controller in and get it wired up and then we'll mount the probe somewhere and then we're going to test it see how it works well, we've got the cube taken apart I've got the optical drive it just you take the four screws out take the top 
cover off and it just slides right out. You just unplug the ribbon cable and the Molex. And as you can see, we got a little CNC board in here. And that's a, where it's going to go. Now, what we're going to, and it's just going to clear it once we get it bolted in there. And we're not going to drill any holes. And we're going to actually use these little washers here. And we'll see how that looks. Alright, so we got that mounted in there. Uh, we use two washers on each side. And there's three of them actually holding it. And this thing ain't going to go nowhere. It's It fits perfectly in there. Uh, the other one really isn't doing anything. So we got these three holding it. And I'll zoom in here. And you can see it looks, looks like it's factory. I mean, it fits really good. And I didn't want to drill any holes. Just have to think about things. Um, I am the master of fabrication. And I always come up with certain solutions. Just depends on how hard I want to do it. But anyway, it looks good. So now all we have to do is get this thing wired up. Now, the optical drive, this is where the optical drive goes and it slides right in there just like that you get you put the ribbon cable on there, the Molex back on there, it fits on there and you got probably about uh, uh, about six millimeters of clearance so that's perfect it's not gonna it's not gonna hamper anything it's gonna be able to function properly we'll plug the probe into here and we won't have to run it very far, we'll find a good place to put it here and an actual Molex where I'm taking the power to power the fan is right here. So everything is all close proximity. So all I have to do is just wire up the fan uh, here. And then I got to take and run the Molex power to here. And what I'm going to do is I've got, this is off of a Molex off of a floppy drive. And I think that'll probably work. And also has some heavy duty cable. But just looking at it, um, I think we'll be fine with the lighter gauge stuff because all this is just driving. This is 12 volts and it's just driving a fan. So I don't think we got any problem with that. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to wire this thing all up and we'll be back. Okay, so we got this all wired up. So uh, where we're getting our power from is the optical drive Molex connector. And what I did is I just pop this cap off there's four little vampire clips here and basically what you do is you just cut your wire to however long you want it and then you lay it across there and you just kind of take a pair of pliers squeeze it together and then you take a screwdriver and kind of jam it in on the end and so I did that and I tested it and we do have power that red light turns on now I haven't checked it to see if the fan works it should in theory as long as our connections are good here. And if I tip it a little bit this way, you can see right there, these are the fan wires. And uh, I'm going to redo those a little bit. And then these are the, the power in wires. So you got your 12 volt and you got your ground. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back together. I'm going to put the optical drive back in it. And we're going to uh, power it up and see if our fans run. And also, um, what I'm going to do on these uh, fan wires, because they're so tiny, the wiring, is I'm just going to tin these up with a soldering iron. And that'll give me a little bit better connection when I slide it into the uh, connector bracket and you tighten the screw down on it. Because I don't want these things coming apart here. So I'm going to do that. And then, like I said, we're going to put it back together and we're going to see how this works. All right, so we got the cue ball put back together. Uh, it's running. Now, the fan you hear on it is from the graphics card. Normally, you don't hear it very much when the cover's on it, but you hear it a lot more. So the graphics card fan runs all the time as soon as you power it up. Uh, the red LED is on on the autonomous fan controller board. So this is going to have to warm up a little bit and then the main fan should start spinning up. So we're just going to let this run for a little bit. We're going to let it get warm and then uh, it should power up by itself. So we'll let it run for a little bit. 
and as you can see we are uh, in leopard right now so yeah, we're running leopard and it runs it quite nicely with that graphics card and the beauty of it is, is everything runs so nice and smooth here okay so when we get the processor upgraded it'll even be running a little smoother so we're gonna let this run for a little bit and we're we'll back well that fan just kicked on and I've been using the uh, thermal gun on it here let me uh, zoom out here and what I've been doing is I've been reading the uh, temperature on the top here and uh, we got <clears throat> right now it's down to 82 but it did get up to 89 and that's when that started to turn on and it's just barely running uh, it's it's not even it's you know just enough basically just to turn it but anyway yeah it's uh, it's working but I'm gonna sh try to show you a little better demonstration so you can hear the uh, the fan ramp up and ramp down uh, what I'll do is I'll take the probe out I just got it hanging down on the heat sink and I'll take uh, some a heat source and heat it while it's running and you can listen to the fan speed up on it and slow down so be back in a moment okay so um, I got the cube fired up here and this is the thermostat or I should say the temperature sensor for the uh, fan so the fa the little fan you hear running now is the one that's on the graphics card and so now what we're going to do I I don't really have anything for a heat source so I'm going to use a hair dryer and so you can hear how quiet it is right now but we're going to ramp the fan up on this thing all right so let me get the hair dryer here and we're going to try to get it going here I'm just going to try to ramp this thing up here a little bit Here, see, it just kicked on. And if I heat it up a little bit more. It's gonna speed up more here. Here, it's starting to ramp up now. Here. Sorry guys, it's not a very exciting demo there, but you can hear the fans ramped up in it. And then as this thing cools down, the vent, it'll start dropping down. You hear it now, it's starting to drop down. And it's ramping, ramping down. And eventually it will ramp down and then when it falls below 89 degrees it will turn the fan off pretty neat works pretty good and what I done I just stick this sensor in here basically where the heat plate is here on this Actually, it'll, it'll ramp down faster now because it's blown on the sensor now. And eventually it'll turn off. This cube runs pretty cool anyway because I do have that modified 600 megahertz board and it. it's got a newer chip. Now here it just turned off. So see, it's, it's happy now. So yeah, so that works fantastic. I'm very impressed with that. So anyway, so this has been a good successful install this is the CNC autonomous fan controller I'll put a link in the video where you can get one of these 
Like I said, these are generally made for CNC machines, but they have many uses. You can use them on, obviously, a computer that does not have an automatic fan control, the older ones. Uh, this will drive two fans simultaneously, but we only have the one in it. That's all we need. It gives us plenty of cooling. And plus we also have the fan that's already on the uh, GPU board also, which is nice. It keeps that processor cool too all the time. It runs as soon as you put the power to it, it starts right up. So anyway guys, um, and on another note, the 1.6 gigahertz processor, the Sonic card that I was going to put in this cube, unfortunately it's not going to work for this because I could never ever install the firmware update that will drive that uh, processor that will allow that processor to work on this machine. And apparently that is a problem with some of the cubes. Somewhere along the lines Apple has kind of changed a few things in some of these cubes. So sometimes that firmware installs no problem and sometimes you cannot get it on or it will not accept it so maybe they have changed the rom chips in there in production somewhere i don't know but you can go on the internet and you can find just complaint 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 after complaint that they cannot get it to work even though it's supposed to work on a cube it doesn't because it will refuse to let it to install the firmware on it so, uh, we're going to plan B. Plan B is I have a 1.4 gigahertz sonnet board coming. Um, the gentleman that I got this off of, we did a little trade. And he's also going to be one of my featured guests on the G4 Cube Chronicles. And uh, he's done some very exciting work on his cube. Very amazing work. And also, he's eventually going to make me a board that he's in a f actually in the process of making for his cube. More on that later. But like I said, the next upgrade will be, we'll put that 1.4 gigahertz board in it. And I'm still waiting for my Stratus high voltage board for this VR, VRM board. And that will give me plenty of power won't be any problem. I could run that 1.4 no problem on this with the fan in it but you know you're really pushing it on this thing because this only has about two amps on it where the other board has about three amps on it but when I get that board I will do a comparison with the original Apple board and the Stratus board that will replace this. So anyway guys um, this is how you do the upgrade. If you want to put one of those in there, I highly recommend it. It's an excellent piece of technology to put in an older machine, especially a cube. Uh, it doesn't take up much room at all. It fits very, very conveniently in there. And the way that I have it put in there, I didn't have to drill any holes or anything. I'm just using the original bracket, just a few modifications, doing using some washers to uh, make sure it doesn't move. And yeah, works great. So anyway guys, please give me a like on this video, I really appreciate it. Uh, also uh, hit the subscribe button, click the bell. We also are on Twitter and we're also on MeWe. So guys, this is Thanksgiving Day, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know I did and we will see you in the next video, bye.